study behind Exterior gas station night. A small, dusty gas station finally sits under the step, the stars, next to a desolate county country road. The only vehicle in sight is a gray 1987 Dodge pickup truck parked along the side of the building. Within the shadow of the ice machine in front of the store, the brief glow of a cigarette cherry reveals a man. This man is Joe, short, tanned, and wrinkled. His fluffy gray beard sits below an orange ski mask, pulled up like a beanie on top of his head. His filthy clothes seem to match his pesky voice perfectly, as if he had just dug himself out of his own grave. He is 63, but appears older. He walks to a payphone in front of the gas station. I, I know which Waffle House. I just need to know what time it'll be there. Okay, well, what time is it now? Okay, then I, I'll see you then. Hey, Reggie, don't forget the, the tap. He hangs up the phone and stands looking at the ground for a second. He looks around him, peering up and down the road. He takes a final large puff of his cigarette and throws it to the ground, pulling the orange ski mask on his head down over his face and beard as he walks into the store. God damn it. Interior gas station night. The only sound in the old cramped, dusty gas station is the warble of an old radio heard over the drone of the beverage troopers. The squeak of the door causes Henry to look up from his book. He is 61 and wears a worn red button-up shirt tucked into his well-pressed khakis. He stands up from his stool and puts his, his yellow paperback copy of Flint face down on the counter. Joe walks up to the counter pulling a small black revolver out of the jacket. Money. Joe tries to make his to mask his voice by making it deep and short. What? Money now. What? Why? Money now. Please, please. Now. Open the register. Well, I oh. Henry steps back from the counter and sits on his stool, his hands resting on his knees. Hey, I need the money now. Joe leans over the counter and starts banging the keys on the register. Open it. Oh, oh. Henry's hands suddenly cling to his chest and he leans forward, moaning loudly like a cow in labor. The register drawer slides open with a ding. Oh. Joe reaches for the money as Henry leans back on his stool and slumps against the wall. Dripping his arms to his sides, Joe is stuffing money from the register into his pockets of his jacket. The last bill, a lovely five, goes in, and he looks up at Henry and finally notices something is terribly wrong. Hey. Hey. Joe scrambles over to the counter and checks on Henry. Oh, God. Where's your medicine? Oh, shit. He turns around and picks up the <clears> telephone <throat> by the register and dials 911. Uh, help. The speedy shack on Highway 14. Hurry up. Joe drops the phone and slides back over the counter, knocking his pistol to the ground as he does. He bends to pick it up as the door of the gas station squeaks open. Joe quickly stands and points the gun towards the intruder. The man at the door stops dead in his tracks as he sees the gun pointed at him. Henry makes a gurgling sound from behind the counter. Both Joe and the man glance over to the counter. The man at the door takes advantage of the distraction and pulls a pistol from behind his, his back and quickly fires a shot towards Joe, missing him by inches. Joe's entire body flinches and a short and a shot erupts from the barrel of his gun, striking the man in the chest. He drops to the ground. Oh, yeah. Joe leaps over the man as he runs out the store. Exterior gas station night. A white sheriff's deputy cruiser sits empty in a pump up, in a pump in front of the store. Joe hobbles by and disappears down the road into the night. Interior Waffle House night. Joe, now unmasked, sits alone in a booth by the window of a coffee shop in front of him. He sits uh, generally, nervously under the table. He is blank. He has a blank stare on his face. A waitress comes over and fills up his cup. The waitress is Sarah Bath. She is 27 years old with short, dark hair and a cheerful smile that never quite reaches her green eyes. Joe doesn't notice her at all at first. Everything okay? Anything else? No, thank you. She walks back behind the counter. A man comes through the doors of the late night diner and walks straight through the bar that Sarah Bath stands behind. Clay, a 28-year-old with short, dirty blonde hair, faded blue jeans, and dark green t-shirt, demands Sarah Beth's attention with his bright, direct gaze. How did your last name Waffle House go? What are you doing here? If Reggie sees you here, he's going to keep both our asses. Sarah Beth, I'm here to get you. We're leaving from Mobile tonight. I've got all my stuff out there in the car. Sarah Beth beckons for him to follow her down to the end of the bar where they can talk alone. Look, I've been thinking, and I just can't leave Reggie like that. We're married. This ain't no high school boyfriend girlfriend shit. What are you talking about? He hits you. He hits Tristan. Look at your eye. It ain't that simple. He pays for our house and our cars and our food. When he found out about you and me, he threatened to take Tristan if I tried to leave him. And he could. Wait, wait, wait. Just 
listen. Outside in the parking lot, a large truck pulls up. Joe drops a file on the table, reconsiders, and replaces it with a one. He quickly stands up from his booth and rushes outside. Exterior, Rolfa House, parking lot night. Joe walks to the passenger side of the truck, pulling out money from his jacket as he settles in his seat. The driver is Reggie, 30 years old, wearing green scrubs and a camouflaged baseball cap. His baby face starkly contrasts with his old demeanor. He takes a big, noisy slurp with the straw of a large fountain drink cup. Well, am I glad to see you? <clears throat> I knew you had a lot of you got. Did you see Sarah the other day? Who? Cut to sheet. I gotta get to the hospital. So. No, I didn't see anybody. All right. I need as many tabs uh, and eight milligrams. Joe quickly turns his head and looks inside. Sarah Beth has walked into view. He plays following right behind her. Reggie unbuckles his seatbelt and kills the engine. He starts getting out. Hey, Reggie, I need to get the fuck out of here. Reggie, please, just give me get out. He pushes Joe out of the door and then slams his shut. Interior Waffle House night. Sarah Beth is scrubbing the bar with a towel while Clay pleads with her. But I told you, I got the job. I got it. I'll be able to send all the money I make offshore home to you. And I'll only be gone for two weeks at a time. You two will be able to stay home together all the time. You'll never have to work. Okay. Okay, let's do this. When I get off, I'll go pick Tristan up from the sitter's house, and I'll meet you. Sir Pet suddenly looks behind Clay and screams as Reggie bursts in the door behind him. Clay spins around as Reggie buries a fist in his stomach. Outside now. Reggie, please, no. Shut the fuck up. Reggie pulls Clay outside by his truck collar. Exterior Waffle House parking lot night. Reggie slams Clay into the grill of his truck. Sarah Beth comes out and cries to pull Reggie back. I thought it was the local mom. I thought you told him to fuck up. Reggie, please, I'm sorry. Clay is getting to his is getting to his feet. Joe walks from behind the truck and stands over Sarah Beth, trying to get Reggie's attention. Reggie shoves Clay hard in the chest, sending him flying onto his back in the concrete. <laughs> Reggie, if I could just So this is how you were paying for all that money for you and Tristan. Clay has gotten up and is running towards Reggie. Like they them? Reggie turns and sees him at the last moment. Just one. Reggie deflects Clay into Joe, and they both go flying backwards. Joe lands hard on his back. The back of his head is making the back of his head making a loud smack against the concrete. Clay lands on top of him, the air rushing out of his lungs. Clay sits up. Joe does not move. He is unconscious. Oh my God, Reggie, get to the hospital. I don't want to that. Reggie walks up to Sarah Beth and reaches inside her apron, grabbing her keys and putting them in his pocket. I want to pick up Trish. We're going to take care of the hospital until I get off, and we'll be back to pick you up out. We'll talk to him. Stay the fuck away from my wife and start sending shit. He spits on Clay as he gets into his truck and backs out. Interior hospital room night. Clay sits in a chair under the television mounted on the wall. In front of him are two beds, and one lies Joe, and the other Henry, the gas station attendant, both asleep. Joe's head is heavily bandaged. Clay stares at the wall across from him, lost in murderous thought. His jaw flexes from his teeth grinding. He clenches and relaxes his fist. Joe's jacket is hanging on the back of the chair he is sitting in. His elbow bumps something hard inside. He begins going through the jacket. He finds a wad of money in the small pistol. He puts the money back inside the jacket, stands up, sipping the, uh, slipping the pistol in the back of his jeans under his t-shirt. He looks up and sees that Joe is stirring in his bed. Clay quietly stands up and leaves the room, taking the jacket with him. As soon as Clay leaves the room, Joe's eyes begin to flutter open. He looks around his surroundings and slowly sits up in his bed. He holds his head in his hands. Oh, Christ. He looks at the bed next to him. <clears throat> oh, shit, look who it is. Henry's eyes open a little and look over towards Joe. Joe slowly gets out of his bed and looks over to Henry's bed and sits down next to his legs. Hey, Henry. Joe. Yeah, I thought I was shot. What are you doing here? I thought you were still in sweet water. Uh, you no, know, I'm back in Millbrook. Uh, another drunk guy down some stairs. Drunk? Who do I look like? Uncle Jimmy? No. When I heard about you having another heart fart, I popped up so from what I was doing so fast, I whacked my head on the bottom of the table and nearly yanked the lady's skirt off. Henry laughs and pain winces across his face, and he quickly stops. Henry takes Joe's hand. Glad you're here, not somewhere out there. God knows where. Me too, Henry. Me too. Interior hospital hallway night. Clay looks around the corner and sees Reggie leaning against the front desk of the hospital talking to a female nurse. Reggie and the female nurse laugh, and then Reggie takes a big slurp from his fountain drink. I was able to do a little bit more than two weeks ago. It's really sweet. She's telling me about finding out the guys. Yeah, they don't have to look at you and get her a lot more. Clay watches for a 
second and then slips away. Exterior hospital parking lot at night. Clay wanders through the maze of vehicles he found he, until he finds Reggie's truck. He looks around and then tries to open the driver's side door. It is locked. He tries the passenger side. Locked. Clay looks around once more and then pulls the pistol from under his shirt and wraps the jacket around his hand holding the pistol. He hits the small rear passenger side window with the butt of the gun until it shatters. He waits for an alarm to sound, but there is only silence. Once again, he digs around until he finds a stash of pill bottles. He looks through them and picks out one label to lot at 8 milligrams. He reaches in the pocket of his jacket and pulls out a $5 bill and sets it on the center console of the truck. He pours out 25 of the Dilaudid onto the $5 bill and crushes them with an empty pill bottle. Pill bottle. He carefully folds up the five so that none of the powder spills out and stores it in, into the empty wallet. He wipes the pill bottle with Joe's jacket and places the bottle in the center console. Interior hospital hallway night. Clay peeks around the corner of the front desk again. The only person there is a female nurse. Clay looks around but does not see anyone. Reggie suddenly appears behind the nurse and touches the back of her neck as his, with a scalpel drink cup. She recoils and squeals. Liquid and ice can be heard sloshing around inside. Clay turns and walks into the nearby room and presses the red emergency button next to the sleeping patient's bed and then runs out and across the hall into another room. Reggie and the female nurse jog, jog by into the room across the front where Clay has slept and runs into the front desk. He pulls out his wallet and carefully opens the five and takes the top off of the drink. He hesitates. The image of Sarah Beth's bruised eye flashes through his head. He dumps in the powder, puts it on the top, and swirls a straw around. He is barely able to duck behind the counter and crawl around to the front of the desk as Reggie and the nurse return. It's like an interesting movie. The phone of the desk rings. Reggie picks up. Reggie Davis? Yes. Okay, I'll be there. Reggie grabs a drink and walks away. Clay creeps off the opposite direction and turns the corner, a grin touching, a grin touching his lips. Exterior hospital parking lot dawn. Clay slowly walks out of the hospital as the first sunlight begins to touch the sky. A car pulls up in front of him and Sarah Beth gets out of the passenger door. She slams the door and runs towards him. Clay. She embraces him. He is shocked for a moment and then wraps his arms around her as well. What are you doing here? He's never gone for us again. Right. We're going. We're going to Mobile with you. Well, come on. Let's hurry. Go for your car, Lana. I'm going to go grab Patricia and we're out of here. They look at each other for a second like hitting school, school children, and then both run off in different directions. Clay gets into his car, pulls around to the curb in front of the main entrance of the hospital. He sits waiting, looking at the doors, drumming his hands on the wheel. He waits. Ten seconds pass. Fifteen. Finally, Sarah Beth comes jogging out of the doors, holding Tristan, her four-year-old son against her. She is almost to the car with her voice from behind her screams. Sarah Beth. Clay's eyes widen in shock as he sees Reggie coming out of the hospital after them. Get back here now. Sarah Beth stops running and turns around to see him as she spins around the large fountain drink cup that Tristan was holding, drops from his hand onto the ground, only ice spilling onto the sidewalk where the cup lands. Clay's face turns white as he opens the door and stands up out of the car. Oh, God. Tristan's arms flop back and forth as Sarah Beth turns to Clay to run to Clay's car. She finally notices that her son is not moving. Tristan? Tristan! She holds him out to see his face and his head rolls back so his face looks straight up at the sky for a second before rolling to the side. His eyes are open and glassy. Oh my God. She lays him down on his back. Richie, hell! Clay is frozen behind the car. He stares with wide eyes as, at Tristan on the ground. Reggie runs over and drops on the ground next to Tristan and slaps his face a few times, first slightly and then with more force. Tristan, Tristan, wake up. Oh my God, what's wrong with you? Reggie scoops Tristan, Tristan's limp body up in his arms and turns and runs back into the hospital with Sarah Beth right behind him. Clay watches them enter the building and then stares down the concrete where Tristan had laid, covering his mouth with his hand. He inhales and exhales deeply through his nostrils, in and out, in and out. Fade out.